Hi and welcome back to Grade Guide. This revision video on energy is directed towards students completing the junior cycle science exam as part of the Irish curriculum. Based off the NCCA learning outcomes, five things we'll discuss in this video are what the term energy means and identify nine different forms of energy. We'll examine some household devices and discover what energy conversions take place inside them before constructing Sankey diagrams to present these conversions. Lastly, we'll carry out calculations to help us work out how energy efficient a device is. Energy is defined as the ability to do work. In physics, an object is at work when it moves, so a simpler way to describe energy is that it is a measurable quantity transferred to a body or object, and we recognise it by the performance of work, which in some cases we see as movement. Two units we use to measure energy are joules and kilojoules. If we think of these units for measuring distance, we know that one kilometre is the same as 1,000 metres. When talking about energy, a kilojoule is the same as 1,000 joules. The word kilo means 1,000 in physics. There are many different forms that energy can take. In this video, we'll look at nine different forms of energy. These include potential energy, kinetic energy, heat energy, light energy, sound energy, electric energy, chemical energy, nuclear energy, and magnetic energy. So let's take a look at each of these forms of energy one by one, beginning with potential energy. Potential energy is the energy that an object has due to one of two things, its shape or its position. Take a look at this elastic band. When the band is stretched, even though it isn't moving, it contains lots of potential energy because if it's let go, it has the potential to move. Similarly, the string of a bow and arrow contains lots of potential energy. At this point, when the archer draws the string back, even though neither of them are in motion, both the string and the arrow have lots of potential energy because if the archer lets the string loose, the string and arrow have the potential to move due to their shape. Stretched springs also contain lots of potential energy because once you let them go, they revert back to their original shape. An object's position can also allow it to have potential energy. The building you can see in this image has lots of potential energy due to its position teetering on the edge of a cliff. Even though it's not moving right now, it has the potential to move once enough of the cliff has been eroded away. At this point, gravity will cause it to fall. The water you can see at the top of this dam also has lots of potential energy because once it reaches the edge, gravity will give it the potential to move all the way to the bottom of the dam. Once the water reaches the bottom of the dam, it has much less potential energy. The next form of energy is kinetic energy. This is the energy an object has while it's moving. All of the balls you can see on this pool table have lots of kinetic energy while they're moving and colliding off each other. When a person is moving when they're walking or exercising in any way, they have lots of kinetic energy. The movement of cars or even the blowing of the wind is an example of kinetic energy. Anything that is moving has kinetic energy. Heat or thermal energy is the energy that particles in an object have as they move from hot areas to colder areas. As we discussed in the states of matter and chemical reactions topic, the more heat energy an object has, the more its atoms or molecules move. Think of how boiling water in a kettle moves a lot more than cold water, just because heat energy is added to it. Light energy is a form of energy emitted from luminous objects. Luminous objects include the sun and bulbs. They all give off light. Sound energy is a form of energy produced from vibrations which enable us to hear. When a musician plucks the strings of a guitar, the strings vibrate and create sound which we can hear. Our vocal cords in our voice box also vibrate when we exhale air through them, and this allows us to make sounds and speak. Electric energy is the energy contained in electrons as they flow through wires. It can also be naturally seen when lightning strikes. Chemical energy is the energy stored inside chemical substances such as food, fossil fuels and batteries. Inside our cells during respiration, chemical energy is released from the food we eat. Nuclear energy is the energy stored inside the nucleus of an atom. This nuclear energy can be released by either splitting the nucleus of an atom apart or by joining them together. Finally, magnetic energy is the energy an object has while it's in a magnetic field. When an object is moving towards a magnet, it possesses magnetic energy. A key thing to point out is that energy constantly changes or converts from one of these nine forms to another. Take this car for example. Fuel, which stores chemical energy, is ignited and released inside the engine of the car. That chemical energy is then converted into kinetic energy, which we can see when the car is moving, sound energy, which we hear from the roar of the engine, and heat energy when the engine heats up. This supports a law of physics known as the law of conservation of energy. This law states that we can't create energy or destroy it, we can only convert it from one form into another. Another energy conversion takes place in this electric heater. In this heater, electric energy from the plug in the wall is converted into both heat energy and light energy. Again, as stated in the Law of Conservation of Energy, no energy has been created or destroyed here. It's only been converted from electric energy to heat and light energy. We can use Sankey diagrams as a way of presenting energy conversions that take place in a particular device, such as in this electric kettle. 
If 400 kilojoules of electrical energy enters this kettle and it's converted into 350 kilojoules of heat energy and 50 kilojoules of light energy, we can draw a Sankey diagram like the one on screen to represent this energy conversion. In a Sankey diagram, the base of the arrow is the thickest part of the diagram because this represents the total amount of energy that enters the kettle, which in this case is 400 kilojoules of energy. The two arrows on the right represent the heat energy and light energy. The heat energy is placed into the thicker arrow because more heat energy, 350 kilojoules of it, emerges from this energy conversion than the 50 kilojoules of light energy. It's also important to recognize that combining the amount of light and heat energy in the Sankey diagram equals the amount of electric energy that entered the device, proving that no energy has been created or destroyed. In this microwave, 500 kilojoules of electric energy enters the device, and it's converted into 400 kilojoules of heat energy, 80 kilojoules of kinetic energy when the plate spins, and 20 kilojoules of light energy. A Sankey diagram with three arrows can be drawn to represent this energy conversion. Light energy is labelled on the thinnest arrow because only a very small amount of light energy emerged from the conversion. Heat energy is labelled on the thickest arrow because this was the predominant energy form to be emitted from the conversion, leaving kinetic energy to be labelled on the remaining arrow. When you draw these diagrams, it's important that you draw arrows of different thickness. Sankey diagrams can also be used to compare how energy efficient certain devices are, such as light bulbs. The diagram on the left represents a CFL bulb, while the one on the right represents an incandescent bulb. In a bulb, electrical energy is converted into light and heat energy. The usefulness of a light bulb is determined by the amount of light energy it emits. We don't particularly turn on a light bulb to give us heat, so any heat it gives off is waste energy. Comparing the two light bulbs, for every 100 kilojoules of electrical energy that enters them, the CFL bulb emits 75 kilojoules of light energy, while the incandescent bulb only emits 20 kilojoules of light energy. The CFL bulb also gives off less unwanted energy, with only 25 kilojoules of energy being dissipated or wasted as heat. So it's clear to see from the two diagrams that the CFL bulb is the more efficient bulb because it emits more light and gives off less heat. We can calculate the energy efficiency of these two bulbs by using this formula which you need to know for your exams. We divide the useful energy emitted from the bulb by the total amount of energy that entered the bulb. This answer is multiplied by 100 to give the percentage efficiency of the bulb. Beginning with the CFL bulb, it emits 75 kilojoules of light energy, so dividing this by 100 kilojoules and then multiplying this answer by 100 tells us that the CFL bulb is 75% efficient. On the other hand, the incandescent bulb emits 20 kilojoules of light energy. We divide this by 100 kilojoules and then multiply the answer by 100 to find that it's only 20% efficient. Make sure you know how to do these calculations for your exams. And that's it for this video on energy. Make sure you're revised over each of these five points in preparation for your exams and that you're familiar with each of these key phrases. Thanks for watching this great guide video. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Best of luck with your vision.